time to write the functionality that finds and reads in the XML files from a specific directory. In the last episode, we hooked up our virtual file system, which should actually make it quite trivial for the rest to be implemented. So let's jump right in. In our test class, let's create a very simple test that says, well, if we have an empty directory, return and find no files. So create the test, call it something like successfully handles empty directory, and inside we'll just write new bank statement importer, import files, put in a directory variable, and assume it returns a list of paths. Actually, before I forget it, I'm not a big fan of the JUnit Hemcrest assertions, so I'll quickly add the assertj library to our project. So open up a browser, go to mavenrepository.com, search for assertj, and then go to the latest dependency version, and copy and paste it to the Gradle file. Good, let's return to our test. Now back in our test, let's write the assertion now. Meaning that assert that paths has size zero. Remember, it's an empty directory, so there's going to be no files. Good. Now, there's obviously some red, because the bank statement importer class does not yet exist. So let's change that by hitting Alt Enter a few times. Create a class and the method. And inside our new method, we simply return collections empty list. Good. Now let's run our test. It compiles. We wait a little while. And then we finally can see that our test is green. Perfect. A small step for mankind, but a big one for us. Okay. I want a test case which is a bit more interesting. So let's copy and paste our existing test and rename it to successfully handles XML files. And at the beginning of the test, let's actually create an XML file. So directory resolve test XML, or any name works really, and then call files create file. Now we have an one empty file with an XML extension in our directory, and that will do for our purposes. And that also means we have to change our assertions to has size 1. And we can actually also check that the file is exactly our test file. So contains exactly the test XML. Now run our test again. And yup, it fails. Because it's time to write some code. And it's actually quite simple. In our import file method, we can write files, new directory stream, and surround that with a try catch. And inside the directory stream, we just simply iterate over all files of that directory. And then we simply add all these paths to our result list. And instead of the collections empty list, we just return that list. And we should be good to go. Okay, let's run our test again. And this time, it works. Great. Now, you might have noticed that in our implementation, we simply scan all files, not only XML files. So uh, let's quickly write another test to check if that's true. We simply duplicate our test method, rename it, and then insert a new file in addition to the XML file. And let's just call it donaldtrump.jpg or something else. And if our assertion holds true, there should be only one file, and it's the test XML file, and not the Donald Trump JPEG. So let's run our test again. And, of course, it fails. But there's actually quite a simple fix. 
we go back to our implementation and you can specify a filter in our directory stream. So let's write star.xml to only look at XML files and none of the other file types. Let's see if that worked. We rerun our test. And this time the test is green. Congratulations, you successfully wrote the scan for XML files functionality. And as an exercise, you could simply write a couple of more tests as we missed a few edge cases. Small hint, what happens with case sensitive or case insensitive file extensions? Like a bit uppercase XML, lowercase XML, or mixed case? Other than that, we can now jump right into parsing our XML files and validating them. So on to the next episode.